Welcome. In a previous video, I installed Download Station on a QNAP NAS, and in that video, I downloaded the Ubuntu 18.04 desktop. So I'll put a link in the description to my QNAP playlist where I have all my QNAP videos. I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be installing the Ubuntu 18.04 desktop in Virtual Station. Uh, I'll click on Virtualization Station. I'll open that up. So I have my Ubuntu server instance here. It's not running right now but I could turn it on if I wanted to. I'm on the overview tab too. It opened to that, but if you already have it open, you need to go to that tab. You want to go to create VM. I'll call this Ubuntu desktop. I want Linux. It says the version. I'll choose 18.04. I'll give this four cores. I'll give it four gig of RAM. And I have 16 in this now. For CD image, I'll click browse. I'll choose public, and I'll choose the 1804 desktop. I'll click OK. Then the hard drive location, I'll click browse. I'll click public again. I'll click OK. I have everything in public, but you'd probably want a different um, directory structure. I'm just doing this for demonstration. The hard drive storage, I'll take that down to 100 gigabytes, because I really don't need a lot. The network says virtual switch. It's our only option there. Then for others, we have assigned to QVM and set VNC password. I'll turn both of those on. I'll set the password. I'll click OK. And now you can see the Ubuntu desktop here. I'll click on the little penguin. It says the virtual machine is powered off. I'll click Start. It's going to ask me for a password, so I'll give that. And now it's booting. You can see the little keyboard here in the bottom with the little person icon. So we have this install screen here. It's asking us if we want to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu, and I'm going to choose install. It's asking me for my keyboard layout. I'm going to use the default here. I'll click continue. It says, what apps would you like to start with? And it says normal installation. I'm just going to do minimal installation here. I'll click continue. It's asking us our installation type. I'll choose the first option. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. I'll click install now. Now it's wanting us to confirm that we want to do this. I'll click continue. It's asking for time zone. I'm in the central time zone, so I'll choose that. Now we want to type our account. I'll do Rick. My computer name will be Ubuntu Desktop. I'll type my weak password in. I'll click continue. And now we can see it's installing the system. Okay, the install is complete. We'll click restart now. It says, please remove the installation medium and press enter. I'm just going to press enter. There's no CD-ROM drive here. It's virtual. Okay, now we're at the login screen. I'll click on my name and I'll type my password in. And here we have the Ubuntu desktop. So if I click on Firefox here, it'll open up just as if it was on my desktop computer. Looks like on top of that we saw this Welcome to Ubuntu. We can just click through this. It talks about setting up Live Patch. Um, I think you have to log in for that. And it says, do you want to send your system info? I'm going to choose No. I'll click Next. And it says you can use software to install apps. And I'll just hit Done here. Okay, so this may seem a little disjointed. So if you're observant, you may notice that this date at the top said Friday and now it says Sunday. I had an issue with my network when I was trying to film this originally, and I got the network issue resolved, so now I'm back in to finish this video up, which I only have seconds left to do. So uh, we opened up Firefox here. We'll type in, I'll type in my website. That will come up. Here we go. And close that out. So I don't know how practical it is to use this. I mean, it's not the fastest thing in the world. But um, if you wanted to play around with Ubuntu or something or some other distribution, this is a nice way to do it because you can load it on the system, play with it, and when you're done, you can um, delete it. Or you can take a snapshot if you want to experiment with things. Take a snapshot before, 
maybe try and install some kind of software package and then use the snapshot to roll back and uh, try again or try something else. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.